In 10 minutes or less, I'm going to explain why you need to be using AI in 2023. I'm also going to give you a cheat sheet of some AI terms and finally going to tell you where AI currently sucks and where it's awesome. Let's get started. First of all, why bother with all this AI stuff? Well, while self-driving cars and autonomous robots are still in the future, despite what some people predict, AI tools may be your art department or design department today, or at least they can help. So here's some of the things that AI currently excels at. First of all, writing things like short stories, poems. Do you need a ghost story that contains a part of your town's history as part of the story? AI can generate that for you. Do you need an original Christmas song? Just ask AI. Heck, it can even help you write your first novel if you want to. This is all done through AI programs that you can talk to or chat to basically by typing in prompts. And they're called large language models or LLMs. Some common ones you might have heard of are Chat GPT and Llama. Uh, the other thing AI can do is generate pictures of really anything you can describe. Do you need a zombie, but you want it to be like a prisoner behind like cell bars? Uh, no problem. Just like type that in. Uh, do you need a Chihuahua dressed as a Mexican wrestler? Also, no problem. So these things are called text to image models, and popular ones are Mid Journey and Stable Diffusion. Finally, AI can generate realistic human speech, ones that's hard to tell that's being generated by a computer and not a person. All you need to do is write the script. So you need a new narrator for your holiday show or voiceover for a video. Again, just write the script and off you go. Uh, there's several uh, models out there for this and it's called text to speech and some good ones are Eleven Labs and Bark. So, even better though, all of this stuff can be accessed for free or very low cost. And you might say, what? Well, how can that be? Like AI is like complicated and expensive and runs on supercomputers and it's all locked up by mega corporations like Microsoft. Uh, well, no. And let me explain. A funny thing happened on the way to the AI oligarchy. You see, traditional AI models are trained on large swaths of internet data using the insanely expensive $30,000 graphic processors. So, of course, you know, your obvious players are out there like Google and Microsoft and Meta and maybe a few well-funded startups like OpenAI. And, of course, they're going to lock this whole thing up, right? However, when the first AI creative programs started coming out there like ChatGTP and Llama and MidJourney, they sparked a huge interest in AI and also a huge interest in open source AI. And then even the Meta's Llama model leaked to the internet and suddenly the secret sauce on how that thing worked was just available out there. And of course that clued in a lot of the amateur uh, programmers and independent researchers in AI. And suddenly they started working on their own AI models. And they've also started taking like the Llama model and they started modifying it. They respun it to special flavors like uh, chat or for coding or other specialized tasks. And these specialized versions take the base model, but they just extend it. And extending it ended up to take a lot less training time and horsepower and data and all the rest of this stuff as obviously creating the original huge model. So people can actually do that using like home, you know, uh, GPUs and stuff like that. So suddenly all these models be, uh, started appearing out there as different flavors. Uh, and uh, Meta itself started open sourcing their models after that. So for instance, Llama 2, they released as more or less open source, they, a few limitations, but uh, everything became much more open after that. And the community started making everything run basically on lower and lower end hardware and kind of like simplifying and compressing these giant models down because they are big and they do take a fair amount to run. But for example, even on the Steam Deck, you can run the Llama 2 model or you can also do image generation using stable diffusion. So you don't have to have super powerful hardware. But wait, you know, my PC is a Chromebook. I mean, it's time to click off this video. Well, no, you don't even need a computer uh, to actually use AI today. So here's some of the free ways uh, or inexpensive ways that you can use AI right now, even with just like a Chromebook or a Raspberry Pi or whatever. First of all, just utilize the free tiers from commercial AI providers. Some of my favorites are Leonardo AI for image generation and ChatGTP, the 3.5 model is free, or Claude AI. Uh, and those are the free large language models that are out there that I, I really like. 
Now, of course, they restrict your use to, you know, maybe around a dozen images or questions per day, uh, but that resets every day and they're totally free to use and they have a very simple web interface and all that sort of stuff. So very, very easy to use. And you, so you can just take advantage of their free services. Another free service is Google Colab. And this is where Google basically allows you to use one of their powerful computers for free. Of course, for a limited amount of time each day. And while Google Colab may look complicated, when using one of the pre-made scripts or what they call notebooks, uh, is just really clicking on the go button a few different times and waiting for everything to load. And after that, it kind of works just like with, you know, does when it runs on your local PC or on some website. Uh, there's also a service called AI Horde, and AI Horde is basically just a bunch of people who are willing to donate their, you know, computer time uh, in order to generate images. Now, of course, it's oftentimes busy and slow, but it's totally, totally free. And then finally, for kind of a non-free option but low cost, you can actually rent GPUs online using services like Vast AI or RunPod.io. You can utilize someone else's RTX, you know, 4090 uh, for less than a couple of bucks an hour. Uh, so you can generate a ton of images in, you know, a few hours on, on a high-end piece of hardware like that. Uh, so your cost per image or query or whatever it's going to be uh, can be really, really low. And finally, here's one important thing you need to know about AI. Right now, AI for creative uses is kind of like the Model T. I mean, it's kind of amazing, right? It's inexpensive and it's available and hey, it does some things you could never do before. Way better than a horse, in other words. But it's also really crude and can't do everything that you want. And so here's a list of things that AI currently sucks at. One thing is AI movies. AI is great at stilled images, but it wants to create a new creative picture every single time. And of course, that doesn't work for a movie where you want, you know, like a smooth, consistent, you know, a person walking across a, a screen or whatever it is, right? So that's a real problem. And in fact, just getting AI to generate two pictures of the same character, just still images, uh, is still kind of a challenge, although that's been helped a lot with something called Loras. Okay. Now, Loras are like a special training so that way AI can know what a person or a thing, like a dog or something, should look like from picture to picture. And you can specify the Laura and say, hey, you know, uh, you know, show, uh, you know, John Claude Van Damme uh, in three different poses, right? And it'll generate him because the Laura has been trained on what he looks like. So, Loras have helped a lot. And also, there's something new called control nets. And control nets for like posing and so like whenever someone's like dancing on the screen or whatever in a movie control nets help control the ai's creativity so it doesn't make them like move in weird ways it makes them move like they are dancing or whatever you want so between lores and control nets ai movies are getting closer and smoother and more consistent still a long way to go but right now uh it's possible but difficult so that's something you're going to probably need to wait six months or a year to be totally easy and smooth out another real struggle bus is the ai songs uh ai could of course write songs but you know actually putting them to music and have someone sing them and everything it kind of sucks uh it's getting better but right now it's just kind of a tech demo also too even ai voice you can do some great things with ai voice getting really realistic. Uh, however, oftentimes you can only generate in short bursts of text. Uh, you know, maybe you need to break your script down into individual lines or something like that. And it's not in real time to get high quality voice. Now, of course, you can, you know, get a much less convincing voice and have it generate much faster and much longer and all that sort of stuff. But there's a real trade-off there. So AI voice, not, you know, it's a, it's a, a ready for prime time, but in limited ways, I guess. So, the final thing you really need to know, though, is all the stuff being said about how AI may suck at certain things, it is changing so quickly. For example, in mid-August, AMD finally released software to allow their GPUs to up to 10x faster in things like AI image generation. Uh, there's also new open source uh, models out there that are, you know, totally original to the community and not beholding to one of these mega corporations. Uh, also, AI software is getting easier to use and is running on lower and lower end hardware, uh, you know, with even more optimizations. Uh, and also these new innovations like LoRa's and control nets and stuff like that are helping to fix the problems of AI. 
all this stuff is, you know, coming rapidly and changing literally month by month. So I can guarantee you that section about where AI sucks is going to be kind of outdated in six months. And it's going to be laughable in probably a year. So the thing you need to know is that AI is moving so quickly and getting better so fast that you need to not sleep on it. In fact, what you need to be doing is using AI 